I'm boring bit of a speech. I've got to start with a few thank yous. First of all, the Future Dream Girls are absolutely amazing and incredible, and you've got so much energy. Just looking at you makes me feel tired. Um, then Spencer, your speech was terrific. Every charity, um, my own, others, has someone who sort of stands out. And after what you went through, Spencer, the way you've devoted yourself to not thinking about what you went through, but thinking about the long-term future of women who've had cancer, so that's 40,000 women a year diagnosed with breast cancer, and more importantly, women with living cancer, so that's half a million women in the UK living with breast cancer each year. Now, when people like me look after patients and we're trying to increase the cure rate, extend quality and quantity of life, it's in a very hospitalized, sanitized, and medicalized environment. I think Future Dreams and what they're trying to do provide something truly different and amazing where we can really think about the whole person, every aspect of social, psychological, emotional, physical, and mental well-being, and younger people thinking about issues such as sexual health and infertility, and really providing a place that's not necessarily a medical environment for patients to go to, because certainly I have plenty of patients who are scared to come and see me in a hospital environment because it reminds them of what they've been through and what they're going through. This would represent a place where people could get together to think about things over the longer term, because once people have been diagnosed with cancer, they need lifelong follow-up, because in my opinion, it's a disease of genomic instability. I think it's actually something very different and something that's not been offered before when most of the cancer charities are working on the molecular mechanisms and signaling pathways underlying a cancer. This is actually dealing with how people feel. But we know that the way people feel and their social interactions really helps enormously determine their long-term outcomes. I had a patient the other day, for example, and I said to him, this was a male, I said, you've only got three months to live, but there's nothing we can do, so just go home. And he went home, and he said to his son, I've only got three months to live, but let's celebrate, because life is for living. And as Woody Allen said in his last film, live every day as if it were your last, and one day you'll be right. So he's celebrating his diagnosis of terminal cancer in the local pub with his son. And a friend came along and said, what are you celebrating? And he said, oh, I've got HIV, you know, the AIDS virus. I've only got three months to live. And his friend said, celebrate away. And his son said to him, Dad, I thought you said you had cancer, not AIDS. He said, no, 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 I have cancer, right? I just don't want anyone sleeping with your mother after I've died. <laughs> and, so, and so sort of going forward and trying to look after the whole person, and people like me look after the whole person, apart from the sexual stuff, which we would never go near. In terms of trying to look after the whole person, I couldn't ever begin to think of anything better than what Future Dreams, Spencer, and the Future Dream Girls are trying to achieve. To me, it's a truly unique resource. It's something that no other cancer charity is offering or considering offering. It provides not only hope, but a feeling of security and those feelings that undergo and underlie good long-term outcomes. I certainly believe that this type of thing can actually increase the cure rate. And I think that Future Dreams can actually work to collect those sort of data to understand how it can improve quality and quantity of life. Going forwards, I think Future Dreams will become a recognized place where women with breast cancer can go, and also their families can go, for the sort of support that hospitals can't really offer, aiming to look after, once again, the whole person. It's an often isolated and difficult journey, and I'd just like to end my brief speech by introducing this film that a lot of people have taken a lot of time and trouble to make, to really identify with women who have breast cancer and living with breast cancer, and the sort of isolation, feelings and fears expectations and desires that they go through on this sort of journey. Thank you very much.